Hey, this is Jason Dillon, pastor at Parkway Church, and I'm so glad you joined this Parkway podcast for powerful inspiration and purposeful insights. I believe this podcast will lift your spirit and lead you into the future God has prepared for you. Enjoy the message. Hey, everybody, this is Jason Dillon. Welcome to Parkway Podcast. What a joy it is to be with you today. And I am hoping that you enjoyed your 4th of July weekend I pray that you flew the flag, stood for the national anthem, saluted the flag, wore red, white, and blue colors, ate barbecue, maybe some watermelon, just had a great time. What a joy it is to live in the nation we are privileged to call the United States of America. For all of its flaws, for all of its failures, this is a great nation. Think about it. Where can you do what you get to do where can you enjoy the freedoms the liberties the privileges that we enjoy in any other country i challenge anyone to help me understand where is a nation like america on earth that has the same freedoms afforded to its citizens that we get to enjoy i believe that america is a great nation I know it has problems. I know that it's a flawed nation led by flawed individuals. But the truth is, if you're looking for a perfect uh, utopia, that will only happen when Jesus Christ comes back and we get to experience heaven. We get to experience his rulership. As of now, we do the best with what we have. But thank God for America. I want to talk to you today as we have been talking about the end time is now about very specifically so you do not miss it of where America is at in the Bible because God prophesies that America would come into existence. And so in your Bibles, some of you may have heard this, some may not, but suffice it to say that we need to know where this is at because when we know this information, it allows us to understand where we are in Bible prophecy and how we fit into the puzzle of end time movements and ministry and exactly uh, what God is doing in the earth. In Daniel chapter 7, allow me to read for you in verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions upon his head, upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. Anytime the word sea is used in the Bible, many times it's in reference to masses of people. So there's four spirits that are striving upon the great sea of humanity. And four great beasts came up from the sea different or diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I watched till the wings thereof were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it. Let me just get to the meat of the matter in this. Down in verse 17, Daniel tells us these great beasts, which are four, because he's going to talk about four beasts, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. So these beasts, we're not left to wonder who they are. We understand them to be, according to verse 17, they are going to be four kingdoms which shall arise. They were not in existence at the time. Also in Daniel 10, uh, the angel tells Daniel, for this vision is for many days yet to come. So it, God literally tells Daniel, because he was seeking to understand understand and God said seal this up it is for those to understand who will be in the end time so when we begin to look at the first beast which is a kingdom that at the time of Daniel had not yet come into existence but I believe now is in existence let's look at that beast the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it. What nation in the world has its animal symbol as that of a lion? Some of you are immediate, per perhaps already answering this, but for those that don't know it, it is Great Britain. Where did America come from? We came out of Great Britain. What is our animal symbol? 
It is the eagle. So Daniel sees a lion that has eagle's wings, and he watches till the wings were plucked from the back of the lion and made to stand on their feet like a man, and the heart of a man was given to it. And Uncle Sam wants you to be a part of the U.S. Army. What am I saying this for? Because we see the heart of a man was given to our nation, a desire for independence, a desire to free itself from the tyranny of Great Britain. Uh, They did not want taxation without representation. Literally, Daniel saw the American Revolution, maybe not in all of its details, but I believe very possibly God allowed him to see just maybe a glimpse Maybe he saw the signing of the declaration. I don't know. The, he doesn't tell us here, but uh, it's, it's amazing what God can do. And I wish when we get to heaven, if God will remind me to talk to Daniel, I'd like to know exactly how he saw it. It is interesting to note that this happens, this uh, plucking of the eagle's wings from the back of the lion happens on or in Daniel chapter 7, verse 4. Now, this is July, the seventh month of the year. On the fourth day, not the third, not the fifth, was the day that the signers, the founding fathers, signed the Declaration of Independence. It's just a nuance, of course, and I'm not into numerology, but it isn't awesome that 7 4, July the 4th, is whenever the prophecy is given. Just a neat nuance to understand that. So Daniel saw the forming of America as a nation. And the eagle has has been a symbol. And God has blessed America to have great influence and great authority and great vision to be able to see and to do, I believe, great exploits in the earth because in essence or or in the foundation of who we are we have honored god and sought to put god first it goes on to say and behold another beast the second like to a bear and it raised up itself on one side had three ribs in the mouth of of it between the teeth of it and they said thus unto it arise devour much flesh some of you are ahead of me already but the nation whose animal symbol is the bear is the nation of russia the russian bear and that's a nation that daniel saw or foresaw that would arise up out of the earth and come into existence and then he continues to see and in verse 6 another like a leopard which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl the beast also had four heads and dominion was given to it Now, my dear friend, to whom I appreciate and certainly uh, look to for insight for Bible prophecy is Irvin Baxter. And whenever he explains this, it really uh, is awesome to understand. He said, again, these beasts are kingdoms. Anytime there are more than one head on the beast, it symbolizes how many times that kingdom or that nation will rise and will fall. For instance, when he was looking into this third beast the leopard he confesses and said for a long time i didn't realize or know what nation this might be i knew america great britain i I saw russia those were some easier more prominent things until one day he was looking at a newspaper and in the newspaper there was an article and it says america to sail um, or, or some nation to sail germany the leopard tank And he thought the leopard tank and then it hit and and pieces begin to fall into 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 place. Germany is the leopard and with four heads on it. So it literally has risen and fallen to power at least three times. Do you remember Hitler's Third Reich? Why would they say Third Reich, which Reich is the word for rain? Because Germany had risen and had fallen two times before and was now in its third stage or moment of glory. And we would be speaking German right now had it not been for the Allied powers that rose and defended and defeated the Axis powers. 
And uh, this is very significant. Remember what I've said consistently. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities and powers. So there are spirits that were moving men and moving nations to do certain things and to conquer because there was a hidden agenda behind that. So always keep that at the forefront. There are spirits that are the basis or the foundation for ideologies and for movements and for things that we see happening on a global scale or that that uh, are seeking to control humanity so right now germany the leopard is in its fourth reign and it's not a reign of poli- of let's say military might but rather of political might um and they're flexing their muscles now notice dominion was given to it do you realize that world war one and world war ii both were started by germany dominion domination was given to it it sought to take dominion over other nations when you begin to analyze these things it is as plain as the nose on our face now you get down to verse 7 after this i saw in the night visions and behold a fourth beast dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly and it had great iron teeth and it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it and it was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Now, literally, this is talking about, let me just say it, the European Union, which is a it is a government that has been formed seeking and will be the predecessor to one world government it is and it will be controlled by the antichrist so you must understand there is a seeking there is a spirit that is seeking for one world government domination that will be manifested in three ways one world government Therefore, the judicial system, the enforcement of laws, all will answer back to a one world governmental structure of authority. One world monetary system to where every nation will use the same currency. And then one world religion. Every man, woman, boy, and girl will worship the same God. This is being sought to be implemented even now as I speak. People are wanting to see this brought into play. What has stopped this? Individual sovereignty. This is why America is so hated, because we have not yielded or been compliant to giving up our sovereignty. Nobody can come to your house today, barge in, demand what they want, and get their way. Why? It's not their home. They didn't pay for it. They're not the master or the Lord over that home. They have no ownership over it. Therefore, you are the individual sovereign of your home. And so that kind of uh, freedom to exercise sovereignty and dominion is despised by people that have given up their rights for supposed uh, protection and supposed um, global submission and they have not received anything in comparison for what they've given up i want to tell somebody what you just experienced the fourth of july the independence the fireworks the the grandeur the glory of experiencing being an american that that sentiment is not shared around the world there are people that have no clue as to the hope and the joy and the buoyancy of hope within us knowing we live in a system that is free where we can under the uh understanding the rule of law we can express ourselves we can uh, make plans we can surge forward in business and capitalism and we can go from being poor to being rich climbing up the ladder of the middle class those those opportunities are not afforded in many countries around the world in some yes so we have been given great opportunity and the reason why many of the world hate us because we stand in opposition to the one world government the one world monetary system and the one world religion 
Now, the monetary system, that's going to come about. Many of you have heard about Bitcoin. You've heard of um, digital currency. In fact, many people do not carry cash anymore. We used to hear cash is king. Well, the king is uh, being taken off the throne because digital currency is now ruling much of the world. It will get to the place where they will put a chip, whether that be a tattoo on the skin or an actual RFID chip in the hand or the forehead, and that will become the way that you buy and sell. And it will be so accepted. Um, the, the Bible says the Antichrist, who will become a prominent, the prominent political figure of the world, who will dominate and lead and seek to, to literally put himself over every other man he causeth both small and great rich and poor everyone to receive a mark i have been reading as many as you of you as have been reading and some of you have read perhaps what i have read they're wanting to combine with the coronavirus vaccine they're wanting to combine an id chip so they can give it and make the vaccine mandatory for every human being on the face of the earth and inside the vaccine there will be a chip to identify you with your medical records and uh, access to your financial uh, bank dealings and so basically they're wanting to number every person because right now people who are seeking control say that there are one billion people who are not documented they have no social security number there's no way to track them there's no way to trace them this is why they're seeking they uh, elite uh, people who are uh, certainly not not servant or they're, they're not servant to God they're seeking to eliminate cash because cash can be invisible and you can't control cash and so they want to control to tax to govern to leverage <clears throat> everything that comes through mine and your hands understanding this and here's what I want to bring you back to center on I want to bring you back to understanding that we are living in the last days um I, please do not look for 20 or 30 years from now saying, well, you know, Jesus may come back 20 or 30 years. You need to shorten your sights to maybe 7 to 10 years. You need to begin to pray like never before. We are not disheartened. We are not living as those who have no hope. We are filled with confidence that God's going to take care of us. And so I want you to be aware that we have been prophesied as a nation in the Bible. And everything that is happening has not caught God off guards. He is not up there wringing his hands in frustration. He knows how to create manna to rain down from heaven. He knows how to bring liquid water from a hard rock. God is able to do the miraculous. So for those listening, I am encouraging you, lift up your heads, open your eyes wide to the miracles that are happening every day, and understand you serve the mighty God of heaven and earth who has orchestrated and planned and overseen and foreseen every event that is happening. He will not allow the devil to get the final word. I've heard some preachers say the devil is on a short leash and God's going to yank him back if he tries to get too far ahead of God. God's in control. So there will be a one world government seek. And so as you begin to watch the news, as you begin to read your favorite newspaper, media outlet, Facebook, whatever you choose to go to, begin to look for evidence of men wanting to control, of them wanting to give a vaccine or a chip that will identify. It's called ID2020. Bill Gates is behind this. They're wanting to put Bill Gates over uh, the World Health Organization. Sadly to say, he's never been a doctor. In fact, he didn't even finish uh, college. Now, he is a multiplied billionaire, maybe trillionaire. Um, but the only thing that is placed him in those positions and high levels has not been the academia or the experience of the health field, but rather his ability to fund this mission 
of identifying undocumented people and bringing everybody into the system where they can be controlled by the one world government. We are not going to be of those people. We're not going to play into that. And this is not political. It's biblical. Once you're aware, you can begin to say, hey, I'm going to serve God. I'm not going to receive any mark that's going to identify me with a system that causes me to serve the devil. I've heard some preachers preach, can you imagine men begging for food and and having the mark and saying, yes, I'll take the mark as long as you give me bread. Nope, what I'm going to do is if they say, well, you can't buy or sell, I'm going to say, Jesus, you are my source. I don't know how you're going to do it, but you will provide. You've done it before. You will do it again. Guys, it is exciting to understand we are living in the very last of the last days. And so we must become energetic, mobilized, evangelist, preachers of the gospel. This past Sunday, as I was preaching, I encouraged every minister to stand up. It took me a while after encouraging and asking because when I initially asked the question, there were only a few of our licensed, ordained ministers. But after asking the question about five or six times, people finally realized he is believing that I am a minister. So for those of you watching today, I believe you are a minister of the gospel. It's time that we redefine what preacher really is. And I'm not diminishing the office of a pastor, the office of an evangelist, an apostle, a prophet. I'm not diminishing those roles, but I am asking men and women to elevate your desire for the responsibility to be placed on your shoulders to say, I am a minister and everywhere I go, I'm going to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If there's a man or woman that is laying in a grocery store aisle or on the side of the road dead and I have opportunity, I'm going to lay hands upon them as the Spirit leads and pray in the name of Jesus I command life to be brought back into this man or woman's body for the express purpose of them having a chance to repent of their sins be baptized in Jesus name and receive the gift of God's Spirit the Holy Ghost so I want to somehow elevate your expectancy to understand God has caused me to be alive today because God believes in me. God believes that I am able to do the will of God and that I will, by His grace, I will not fail, but I will do what God has called me to do. So today, for those of you listening, for those of you that have been uh, sharing this podcast, thank you, but I want to encourage you to again look to the hills from whence cometh your help look up for your redemption draweth nigh every day talk to God and say God this is the day you have made not only will I rejoice and be glad in it but I will seek your face I will call upon you while you are near I will say of the Lord he is my help he is my strength he is my redeemer and I will yield to you today for you to lead me and guide me in whatever direction you so choose God bless believes in you. I believe in you. The end time is now. Let's do it for Jesus like it's never been done before. Let's let's make a difference. Let's make an impact on the world that is before us. God bless you as you go into your field of labor and see God do miraculous things. Hi listeners. This is Scott Cooper, producer of the Parkway podcast. That concludes the show for today. We hope you enjoyed. Remember, We offer video versions of the podcast on our Facebook and YouTube channels, as well as the audio versions on your favorite podcast provider, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We also encourage you to check out our website at www.parkwaychurch.net, where we offer live streaming of our services, as well as video archives, and the opportunity to give to help support this ministry so that we can continue to bring you awesome Holy Ghost-filled content each week. Thank you for listening, and please tune in to our next episode.